a video on how to make a contact sheet in Lightroom. So we're going to use Adobe Lightroom for all of our contact sheets throughout the year so make sure you watch this video as many times as you need to just sort of make it second nature really on how to use um, this software. So I'm going to click it open. Um, it may take a couple of seconds to load when you guys open it, especially if we're doing it all together in class. Um, so just bear with it, um, it will open eventually. You then need to sign in using your college ID, so that's your D number. Um, and then your password is just the one that you use to get onto your computers. Um, it then may ask you if it's a personal account or if it's a company and school account. You need to make sure you click company and school. This is the same um, if you're trying to access this software at home. You can go on to Adobe Creative Suite um, on Google and download this software now um, free of charge. Again, you just need to sign in using your college um, email address and password and then make sure you click in company and school account and not personal account as it will not work. Okay, so I've opened Lightroom. My Lightroom has already been used so um, Yours will be blank at this point, but I just wanted to show you what it'll look like if you have already uploaded photographs. So I'm just uploading Juno Calypso's photographs today. Um, just because I haven't got any of my photographs on this Mac, so I've just had to steal all her photographs, but here we go. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like if you've previously got photographs on. Um, and I'll show you how to import new photographs. So this is what you guys need to do. So you wanna go file import photos and videos and then it'll bring up this new window so here down the side down the left hand side under source it's basically showing all of the files that are on your computer so we've got your mac files so this is things like um desktop documents all those things um, and then you've got your, this will be your D number, but it's my name because it's a staff account. And then this is your Apple storage. So depending where you've saved your photographs, you can then go into those files and just find them from there. Um, if you are using an SD card, you're going to want to go onto desktop and because that's where your SD card will show. Uh, and then you'll be able to click straight into there. Um, but I would recommend always saving your photographs to Apple Storage or OneDrive just to keep them, um, you know, make sure they're safe. Um, Lightroom does save all of your photographs to the specific computer. So whenever you open Lightroom on that computer, um, all of your previous images will be there, like I've just shown on this one with all the previous Juno Calypso images I've imported. Um, so you can go back in and edit those as and when. However, like I said, if anything ever happens and your computer stops working um, and you have to move to a different computer in the classroom, then your images won't be there. So just make sure they're saved to Apple Storage or your OneDrive. Okay, so today I've just saved mine onto my desktop. So I've put them in a Juno Calypso file, not imported. The ones that are greyed out are ones that are already imported. So you can tell, um, you know, which ones you have and haven't. Um, so the ones that I've got this little tick on and I highlighted are ones that I need to import. If there's any that I don't quite like, I can click that off and that can go on as, you know, it won't import that image, should I say. Okay, so um, I'm going to click import on these and it's just going to bring up a new page. So these are my most recent imported images. I can also click down here and go to all photographs and that'll bring up every single one of my photographs I've ever imported into Lightroom. So this is useful for when you're wanting to compare your shoots, uh, if you're wanting to edit things alongside each other. So if you want to edit in a photograph from Photoshoot 1 in the same manner as Photoshoot 4 or something like that, you can just go back on, get your, all your images from Lightroom and edit them in the same format. Anyway, so... Um, you can either make a contact sheet out of your previous import or you can make them out of all photographs. It's entirely up to you. So when you are selecting your photographs, you just want to click on the first image you want to import, um, turn into a contact sheet, hold shift and then click on the last image and then that will highlight the entirety. If I click off, if I wanted to import this one, 
um, this one, this one, and this one into a contact sheet. I just hold command and then click on each of the images. So if they're not all next to each other, the photographs that you want to make into a contact sheet, it's command and not shift. However, today I am just going to do them all. So shift, click the one right at the end. Then I'm going to go to print. As you can see, my photographs that I've selected are now all along the bottom. Again, if these stop being highlighted like so, if they go this slightly darker grey colour, it just means you need to go right to the end again. Make sure you've clicked on the first image, hold shift and click on the last and they'll all be ready to go in your contact sheet. However, at the moment you can only see this one image. So in order to make it more of a contact sheet format, if we go to this sidebar on the right hand side, where it says layout, you're going to come down to page grid and we want to make it three by three. You want to make sure that rotate to fit is selected so that landscape and portrait images fit in nicely. You can then also change the cell spacing just to make it look a bit more pleasing, like so. If you really, um, if you've taken all landscape images and um, you feel like a portrait layout isn't working for you, you can go to page setup and then just change the orientation to landscape. So page setup is just down here. Um, I think that works best for these photographs actually, so I'm gonna keep it as landscape. But if you do change your mind, it's page setup and then back to portrait. But I'm gonna keep it landscape for today. Okay, so because I have just used someone else's photographs today, this bit is not gonna show correctly but if you just carry on copying the steps, it will work for you guys. If you've taken photographs on your phone, it's gonna have the same issue with what I'm about to show you. So make sure you're always taking photographs on the DSLRs when told to do a photo shoot. However, for the initial part of the photography course, you'll be told to use your phones. So you're gonna to wanna to click photo info. This is just maybe it's two thirds of the way down on the right hand side. So it's right here. This will bring up the file name automatically. So these are all Juno Calypso's photograph names um, on here. And it'll put them underneath all of the images. So if you have used a DSLR, it'll tell you the image number and it'll make it really easy to reference when you're going back to edit later. However, if you use a phone, it makes up an entirely different file name. Um, you then want to go to custom settings and you want to click exposure again because these aren't my photographs it's not bringing anything up but this will bring up the um, ISO um, and the shutter speed and things like that so you will be able to take note of your settings that you've used so this is really important information so again just make sure that exposure is clicked not file name and then click on edit and you wanna go down to where it says exposure here and you're gonna to go to ISO speed rating. So I'll just say that again, you'll see exposure right here and you're gonna to go to ISO speed rating. So then up here you'll see exposure and ISO speed rating. When you click that, it will show underneath each of your images, the shutter speed, the ISO, and any other information that's important for your photographs that's been gathered by the DSLRs. Um, so you'll be able to tell which settings you used on the camera to take that photograph which is really important for if you want to repeat a shoe or you felt like something really worked and you want to you know reuse those settings okay so make sure that is done I do apologize that it's not showing today okay so when you've completed your contact sheet this one has um, six pages you're going to want to click print er, not print, print er down at this side. Again, it might just take a few seconds to load. Then you want to go right here where it says PDF and you're going to save as a PDF. I'm going to call this Juno Calypso contact sheet. For yours, if you're doing this on um, composition week you're going to want to call it composition contact sheet or whatever's relevant if it's your photo shoot one photo shoot two name it that and call it contact sheet just call it something that you'll know exactly what it is 
just for ease today I'm going to save it to my desktop but again you're going to want to save these in a nice safe file for you so be that OneDrive, Apple Storage, whatever that may be. Click save. Then this bar up here it'll say preparing print job. Again we're not printing this it's just what the option says. It may again take a couple of minutes to load especially if it's a full class doing it at the same time. When that goes off the screen it'll show wherever you've print you've sent it to print so it is here on my desktop you've clicked that open this is how my contact sheets are going to look on yours you should have a little bit of writing underneath if you've used the DSLR then you're going to want to click on each of the pages so I've clicked on page one then I'm gonna right click export as and then change it to a JPEG so I'm going to call this number one, save, click on the second, export as, number two, so on and so forth, until I've done all of the sheets. This is because Google Slides only lets you drag and drop JPEG format, it won't let you drag a um, PDF onto your Google Slides. So then you can go wherever you've saved them. So I've saved mine into documents and then these will be able to be accessed and dragged onto my Google Slides pages and presented and annotated appropriately. Please ask me if you have any questions. Again, try and follow this step by step um, and you can watch it as many times as you might need. Um, just remember you're always going printer PDF, save as PDF and that can save wherever you want and then always remember to click on the side, click on each one, it won't work if you just right click on it, that's still going to export that one so make sure you've clicked on it, export as and make sure you're always changing it to a JPEG so that you can put it on your Google Slides. Then they're ready to just drag and drop onto your Google Slides. Okay. Thank you.